this is a, a diagram, sort of, that means nothing to anybody else, but it's very important to me because it describes my journey through life all in half a notebook page. And uh, it goes from here to here, like this. And at the top we start with like unknown. This is the age 10, 12, 13, 14. And uh, the pink describes uh, something like my atmosphere or my mental feeling kind of in general. My primary virtue was calmness, like around the age of 10. And uh, my life was filled with what I felt was disrespect and fear. Those were the primary negatives. I was very much so an animist uh, when I was around the age of 10 and prior to that. I, uh, I thought that rocks were conscious and I was always very gentle when I played with them because uh, because of that, you know, just be nice to other things. You, in in theory, you don't know how they feel, so just be gentle. Don't make any missteps with how you treat other people. Uh, around the age of twelve, I end up becoming more agnostic. That means more blatantly, you know. I don't know what's. I'm not sure about what's going on here. Thirteen, I was definitely atheist. Uh, Fourteen, uh, funnily, like in the religion category, so I wrote Nietzsche, and uh, that's definitely true. I was at fourteen. I very much so identified with everything that I read that he wrote, which was funny because I could tell that it was not normal for me to even come close to understanding anything that he wrote at fourteen, kind of. And uh, around this, my mental atmosphere had a lot to do with power and ability, with a commitment to something, like sort of like a commitment to yourself. And uh, the idea of universal convergence, that you as a conscious being is something that the entire universe has converged to create, which is unimaginably large. And uh, you are definitely the greatest and most high-density integration of every layer of complexity and everything going on in the universe. Uh, it's pretty intense to be experiencing what it's like to be a human. So do so. whatever you're going to do, the, the entire universe has led up to you. That, and that was what I, that was, in my head, that's what I thought when I was 14. Uh, Coming to 14 to 17, uh, the most important like atmosphere was the validity of my mind to itself. Uh, the idea of genius, uh, I have a thing where genius just means that you're sure that you're right when you can tell everybody else believes something else. But it's okay if you have established in a sort of a open source way the validity of, validity of your own mind to itself. And in a way, this is actually a spiritual thing that it is, versus I, st I did it logically first, kind of. What this is, is accepting yourself fully. Uh, interest in science, skepticism, independent thought, what I normally read was scientific journals, scientific blogs, scientific news, and physics forums. Around the age of 17 to 18, I would say I gained a mastery of thought uh, I had a I had a self-defined ethics that I created from scratch. Uh, around the age from 13, 12, maybe 12, 13 to 14, definitely, I was sure that I had to self-generate my own ethics from scratch. That it was it was a whole, just something bad to inherit them from the culture you were born into. That's me. That's completely meaningless. And. Uh, I started that my interest in skepticism turned into objectivism, my interest in science turned into a study of rationality, and my interest in independent thought ended up becoming an interest in philosophy. And who I normally read was Ayn Rand and Paul Rosenberg. And both of these people I very, very well understood. Uh, I would say that I have definitely mastered objectivism and am able to. Uh, describe it extremely well and answer any questions regarding it as well. Uh, coming up to the age of 19, 
I actually, for my religion, I would end up writing pantheist. Uh, it's so I sort of realized this idea at some region of points, and it was very interesting. Uh, I started becoming more into existential awareness in my mind. I had a, a growing interest in breaking away. By breaking away, I mean essentially what it meant to define your own ethics. Uh, when you were born, you are trained for your entire life to live a life that was not ever yours. You're trained to live a life that was the generation of some random, uh, you know, hallucination of a lot of people. Uh, at the age of 19, I started having a growing interest in breaking away. And what I mean by breaking away is exactly what I meant by the importance of defining your own ethics. Because when you are born, for your entire life, you may not ever even think about it, but for your entire life you were trained to live a life that is not even your own. Never are you called upon and asked, how do you want to live? It, or if, if that's ever seen as important. In the same way that we inherit our ethics from the culture we are born into, often do we more so inherit the way that we live. The most important thing you can do as a human is to figure out your own way to live. Coming to the age of 20, uh, oh yeah, uh, lateralization became important. I, I've, I'll, I'll describe that to you in the future. And with this stuff, I started understanding Zen. I discovered a, what I call a meta abstract god, and I feel that due to the very careful way of logically going about things, uh, my understanding of God is uh, in some ways much better than anybody I have ever read or come across regarding you know your usual prophets and people. But I call it a meta abstract God because it is meta abstract. I'll talk about it in the future. And then I have an interest in spirituality. The kind of people and the environment I'm in. I'm, I like Alan Watts a lot. I like Osho. And I read and spend time on Tumblr a lot as well. And after 20, my primary interests will regard flow. And what flow means is to essentially understand that when you are doing art or when you are expressing yourself in a higher state of consciousness almost, that it is a single art that you are doing that is overlappable across any media type, whether it be hula hooping or writing or music or art or speaking or science. And next is science as art or business. I know a lot about science and know how to well do it. I understand logic very well. Now to turn it into an art or to make money off of it to do that well. My, uh, my interest went from science to philosophy to breaking away to spirituality, and now it will be sex. Uh, and this is a very interesting background to approach sex by, because this is the background I'm approaching sex by. The uh, pink region describes this as the beginning of an era of originality. During this entire time, especially around here, I uh, realized that none of my thoughts were original. And now, uh, most of my thoughts, greater than 50% of my thoughts are completely original. And then this will generally turn into breaking away. And breaking away, I mean as breaking away from the pattern of life that you were given by your elders and uh, stepping outside culture to create your own way to live from nothing. And uh, that is essentially the greatest courage that could exist, because that means you are standing up for yourself. And when you do that, you will show other people who you are. And 
essentially, you will show them that it is possible to live another way than they were trained. It is possible that something else good exists outside of your fence.